Hey guys, welcome back. It is uh, module K4 here, which is knowing the people. Probably the most important part of your business. And this is a little presentation called Be a Seller, Not a Buyer. Okay, so we're all back from our little holiday fantasies because I'm actually recording this New Year's Eve day. There's got to be a better word for that, but until I find one, I'll call it New Year's Eve day. And um, so we're back from our little fantasies and, you know, the ones where we return home and spend time with people who love us unconditionally and tell us how wonderful we really are. We're good enough. We're smart enough. And gosh darn it, people like us. You know, that's a little uh, little thing from Stuart Smalley. He was a character from Saturday Night Live in the... 80s, played by Al Franken. And frankly, I think I've actually possibly used that quote before. I've got to find some new quotes. Anyway, um, yeah, we're good enough, we're smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like us. Yeah, right. Well, sadly, we can't go through life living with our moms, although some of my friends from the old neighborhood are now testing that theory and have a career of any note. So we need to look to ourselves to solve our problems. And for those of you who are not getting what you want out of your acting careers, I have been struck by a bolt of genius, that and a bout of post-binge drinking dysentery that would make an African refugee camp resident envious. For some reason, I woke up looking back on my own career and was considering what worked, often not me, and what didn't, usually me. I thought about all the various activities that I and thousands of other actors around the world attempted in an effort to raise our career status. From the standard army issue ignominious, look it up, to the vertigo inducing level of barely breathing. Look out folks, from my delirium I detected a pattern. Ooh, I love patterns because they lead to less work. It seems that out of all of the things I tried, only a few led to an obvious change of state, whereas most of them led only to greater familiarity with my psychotherapist. Can you say thank you, Big Pharma? So what was the difference between successful and ineffective? The simple answer, money, and not the way you might think. While I had been convinced by thousands of actors and service providers that I should not be scared to spend money on my career, it turns out that the real game changer for me was choosing to dedicate myself to being a seller of services rather than a buyer of them. As actors, we have been somewhat brainwashed into thinking we need all these tools to have an acting career. You need to buy a bunch of services to compete with your fellow actors for a limited amount of check signer airtime. You need to market yourself over and over so that eventually your headshot, postcard, cookies, custom-made yo-yos make an impression. But what if that doesn't work? Well, then you need to do more marketing. Does that sound familiar? Sure it does. I've heard it a million times, and I completely bought into it for a long time. And then I stopped doing all that marketing, and I started selling. And OMFG, I started working as an actor. What's that you say? Working? There's no work. That's just something actors who have family in the business or hot girls who sleep with producers do. I mean, isn't it? It's not something anyone can do. Is it? Yes, it is. And you know how I know? Because I tried it and it worked for me. So you're thinking, that's great, David. But, w <laughs> but WTF does being a seller mean? What is it I have to sell? Lest you run out onto Hollywood Boulevard at 2 a.m., the answer is not your body. Well, that's a good question. What do you have to sell? What you have to sell is you. You are an amazing little product. If I were going to market you, I'm sure you have all kinds of product features that provide all kinds of consumer benefits that you rarely talk about. Just ask your mother or Jerry Seinfeld's. How could you not love Jerry? You just, need to get, you just need to get out there and sell those features and benefits, baby. 
As Alec Baldwin, or as he was known in Glengarry Glen Ross, fuck you, once said, they're sitting out there waiting to give you their money. Are you going to take it? Are you man enough to take it? Now those are bold words, but they are the truest words you will ever hear. You need to go out there and take their money. This isn't a game where if you just play nice, good things will happen. You need to go out there and sell. But you know what? I'm not trying to freak you out, so don't get all freaked out about it. Selling can be fun, and the funner you think it is, the easier it is. Just think of it as sex or some other fun activity. Okay, mister, you said the magic word. Fun, not sex, perverts. Tell me more. All I'm talking about here is getting out the door and making connections and creating relationships with people. It's that simple. The way you do that is by offering your services to them. And that can mean anything. The last thing it means is going from casting office to casting office begging for auditions, which is what a lot of people in the industry would have you believe. Seriously, that is the last thing you want to do. The problem with that approach is that even if it worked on occasion, it would have no lasting effect. You might get a few auditions out of a hundred offices, if you're lucky, but every time you wanted an audition, you'd have to start all over again because begging or asking is not selling. When you sell, you have something to offer. You know you are helping make someone's life better. You're not trying to get something. It turns the whole thing on its head. Most actors think of their careers in terms of getting something acting jobs from people that have it, producers. So these actors think of themselves almost as homeless people begging for change on the street. And trust me, I know the feeling, okay? I know that sick, sickening, desperate, sinking feeling that you have nothing and they have everything and you have no idea how to get it. They have nothing and, and the industry has everything and the only way to get it is to beg, right? Well, a simple change in perspective turns that entire relationship on its head and puts it where it should be. That is, we are involved in an equal exchange of services. We actors have as much to offer as they do. We just have to build up trust and relationships to get that exchange started. Trust me, it's already going on with thousands of actors and thousands of producers and directors all over the world. And the reason it's going on, the reason there's this exchange of services, the reason why people are you know, putting scripts on Brad Pitt's desk for him to read is because of that relationship that has been established. But that's really the only difference between someone like that and, you know, the rest of us actors who haven't gotten ourselves to that level of confidence and belief in ourselves and who aren't actively pushing our services to the world of buyers which are the producers. We're not buyers. We shouldn't be buyers of services like, you know, headshots and postcards and workshops, etc. Those are fine, but that's not how you build a career. Those are, are little ways to augment your career. We, as a rule, should be selling. Now, just as an aside here, I have to say that while this stuff may freak you out, as a lot of what I write freaks people out, Deep down inside, you guys already know everything I'm telling you. It's called common sense, okay? It's just you, you put a spin on things to make it seem a lot scarier than it needs to be, but you guys all know deep down inside how to do this stuff. You just kind of need it um, clarified for the world of acting. Everything I advocate is based on simple rules of human behavior, and they can be applied not just to acting, but pretty much any situation in life if you just change a few of the words around. What works for actors works for lawyers, grocery clerks, and underwater welders. It's all about giving people what they want and need so that you can get what you want and need while maintaining dignity for everyone. Now, doesn't that sound simple and pleasant? It's not that scary of a prospect. You have to realize that the people out there that are creating entertainment are looking for actors, okay? They're looking for you. It's, it's like Alec Baldwin said. They are dying to give you their money. Are you going to take it from them? Okay? If you try to help someone, they will like you and likely they'll help you back. 
if you just try to get something from someone, even if they if you pay them for it, or maybe especially if you pay them for it, without the thought of reciprocation, you're just a consumer, a number, a paycheck, whatever. You you're not an app, you know, you're not a you're not in their mind. You're just a transaction to them. Okay. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. What was I saying? Oh yeah. You have to sell, baby. Now, here's an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say you're a real estate agent and you want to get more clients. Well, we've all received those calendars in the mail from real estate agents talking about how great they are and how they will give you such personalized service and that, shockingly, they are sure this is going to be a banner year for both buyers and sellers. And I'm not exactly sure how it's always a buyer's and seller's market, but that's what they would have you believe. You get tons of these things and mailers and circulars. You can only keep one calendar or one fridge, fridge magnet, right? So 99% of that stuff goes into the trash with all those expired pizza coupons you were sure you were going to use. Then one day, in the middle of winter, oh, and before I carry on, that's exactly what's ha what happens to all of your marketing materials, okay? All of your postcards, all of your headshots, all of that stuff goes in the garbage. And I know because I've worked in the casting offices where I threw it out personally, okay? And it's not because I wanted to. I actually felt terrible doing it, but that's what I was told to do because if these people get thousands of pieces of mail. They can't possibly go through all of it and go, oh, look at that. Tina did a student film this week. I'm going to call her in. <laughs> they just don't. It doesn't work. Just like all the mass marketing stuff you get doesn't work for the most part. It's something you can add on as an extra to what you're doing, but it shouldn't be the focus of your efforts. And too many actors focus on doing that stuff and not meeting people and getting their face out there. Anyway, so imagine that one day in the middle of winter, and let's assume you live somewhere where the word winter actually means something, a knock comes on the door. It's a handsome, well-groomed gentleman or lady, and they introduce themselves to you as Super Dave, a real estate agent recently moved to the neighborhood. They say they're trying to get to know some of their neighbors, so they ask if it would be all right if they brought your trash to the curb for a month. You immediately pull out your Glock and instruct them to get the F off your property because I'm already a Mormon. You don't need to recruit me. They politely explain that they are not trying to convert your religion, but sincerely trying to get to know the people they are going to be doing business with for the benefit of all. Since snow is piling up in your vestibule, you can look that up, you reluctantly, imagine the nerve, agree, and for the next month you sleep an extra five minutes and don't have to put on your parka and brave the wilds climbing through snowdrifts to get your microwave bacon packaging to the curb. Until you have to drive to work five minutes later, of course. You are sure this person is casing your house, not to sell, but rob it. But at the end of a month, he is back and offering to walk your dog. You're like, that's it, honey, call 911. But you never really cared much for the 150-pound Malamute your kids guilted you into buying, so you say, have at it. But your own guilt being what it is, you invite the poor slob in for a coffee to find out what he's really up to. Pretty soon, you realize he really is sick. He goes around helping people and asking nothing in return. What kind of stupid capitalist is he? But you, recognizing a bargoon when you see one, continue to play along to keep getting his free services. Well, before long, he's got the whole block in the palm of his hand. He's going to brises and bar mitzvahs, Everyone loves the guy and trusts him with their kids, dogs, hot nannies, etc. One day, your hubby, or you, get a job transfer. You have to move. So, over coffee one morning, you mention it to Super Dave, the neighborhood mensch. Not sure how I got into this whole Jewish thing. And you discuss pricing, etc., 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 all the real estate stuff. He, not only being a great guy, but also a knowledgeable professional gives you good, straight information. So when it comes time to sell, you of course choose the guy who sent you four calendars this year. What? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You of course choose to entrust the sale to Super Dave, and so does everyone else in the neighborhood. 
except the neighbors who have real estate agents for relatives and are forced by their Aunt Tookie to use their cousin Mikey on pain of losing their potentially bountiful inheritance. And everyone lives happily ever after in a long-term, mutually beneficial relationship. Now, it's pretty obvious that this is the way to run your life. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? I mean, you can have close, personal, meaningful relationships with people you trust, or you can have superficial relationships with large corporations who have millions of dollars to spend on marketing, but really don't stand behind their products, offer shoddy quality at low, low prices, so you can buy so much of it that your closet is full of items still with their tags on, and then you end up throwing those things out with the tags still on them because you never actually had enough time to wear them. Um, you know, so it is obvious that it's a preferred way of living your life, let alone doing business. But many of us rely on the almighty buck to replace the almighty relationship. Big business has supplanted personal relationships, especially in America, um, because you know, America was founded on the belief of freedom, freedom to do anything you want. But what that has led to is that it's led to freedom for businesses to do whatever they want. And unfortunately, we are sort of unable or unwilling to see that all of the messages that come through the airwaves, who are, I guess, we have trusted these people, but... The question is, are they really, have they really ever done anything to deserve that trust? We trust them because they tell us to trust them, but they haven't ever come over to our house and walked our dog or taken the garbage out. All they've done is give us low, low prices, but we don't know anything that goes on behind the scenes. We don't know anything about them personally, except what they would have us believe. And often what they would have us believe and what is the truth are two completely different things. Hence, you know the problems they've had with sweatshops, with doing business in China where some of the standards aren't up to snuff. And the reason those standards aren't up to snuff is because everything is based on price. And so they hurt their own people trying to get contracts with companies uh, that we buy our goods from, all because of low, low prices. And you know what, folks? Price should not be your only consideration. Anyway. We have been brainwashed badly to believe that getting low prices is actually more important than relationships. And you will. You'll turn away business. If somebody came to your door selling you you know, some children's clothing, but it was 10% more than what you'd pay at Walmart, you'd probably wouldn't buy it from them because you don't even stop to think that your time is actually worth something. You just think low prices, that's what I'll buy. But you need to factor in your time. You need to factor in gas costs you need to factor in all that stuff when you consider price it's the number that's on the price tag is not the only number you should be considering anyway and that everything can be cured by throwing money at it and the the truth is that is not the case and again just look at some of the movies that come out of out of hollywood huge budgets terrible movies you know you can have an acting career if you pay enough people like photographers, casting directors, printers, uh, the post office and bakeries to do your bidding for you. That, that type of belief. It's just not the case. You cannot buy an acting career. It's impossible. You have to create one and then go sell it. The problem is that people generally can tell the difference between what is real and what is hype. I mean, of course, other than people like me who watch infomercials and the Home Shopping Channel and I buy all this crap because it looks really good on TV and then you get it home and it's never as good. But, you know, maybe that's a that's maybe that's the corporation's problems that are building crappy goods and and pitching them as being something that they're not. I mean, maybe we are supposed to trust one another and people just shouldn't break our trust. Anyway, a postcard is a poor surrogate for a relationship. So while these tools that we've been told we need can be useful, they should be only used to back up a solid relationship. They aren't the bricks and mortar that form them. Now, are things starting to become clear for you guys? Are you now seeing that selling is better than buying? Personal selling in its purest form always results in mutual gain. If it didn't, one party would leave the relationship and the seller would have to start all over again. And nobody wants to do that. 
I mean, if you've done any um, business studies in, in your life, you've probably heard the axiom that it's a lot cheaper to retain a customer than it is to get a new one. And yet so many businesses don't do what they know to be true. They let their old customers go. Like when you call up your cell phone company and they won't, you know, they won't agree to adjust your bill five dollars because you've been overcharged. Just, they just refer back to the contract or whatever. And then they'll argue with you for an hour, which wastes who knows how much of their money and your money uh, arguing about something that's five dollars. Now I think they're finally changing their mind on some of that stuff, but that has been a, a major policy of corporations is to never give in. And I think they're finally realizing, hey, maybe sometimes it makes sense to give in. Anyway, bad salesmen can't keep clients. Good salesmen can't handle all the clients they have and hire assistants. You don't need a lot of clients if your clients love you. They will refer their friends who will in turn refer their friends. The exact same thing can be said for your acting career. Serve your community and your community will serve you back. Sure there are lots of people who are too scared or insecure to get what I'm talking about right now. Like the, the, the person that I sort of referred to when the real estate agent knocked on the door, you know, they're scared and they're like, what are you talking about? You're going to do something nice for me? And so these people will, there are people out there that will take advantage of your good nature. But the great thing is you will still win even while being taken advantage of because you will meet other potential clients through these people who are taking advantage of you. Even if one single client doesn't work out, usually the people around them will recognize the value you're bringing and you will still benefit. So don't even, don't be scared uh, that just because it doesn't work every time that that doesn't mean that overall it's not the principle by which you should live because you know deep down inside that is how you should live. You shouldn't go around trying to rip off other people and take advantage of them and nor should people do that to you. So if you live your life that way, you'll encourage more other, other people to live their lives that way, even in Hollywood. You just have to look at the big picture and the long term. Nothing is very fun if you look at only short-term successes. That's why corporations aren't having much fun. They make lots of money, but they're really not having a lot of fun. Just keep plugging away, doing the things you know are right, and seriously, you cannot help but succeed. Whatever it is you're doing, you will, and that, so basically what I'm saying is, you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, if you, if you live your life the right way, and you promote yourself with confidence to others and they reckon, they'll see the value that you bring and they will be eager to do business with you and you will do business with them. It's a great, it's a win-win. So look, to wrap up, you might also notice that I'm doing with you exactly what I've been talking about above. I'm trying to create a relationship of trust with you guys by giving you a ton of free and proven information and of course those of you guys who are members have have already, uh, you know, in, are already enjoying the trust and the information that I that I'm bringing on a much deeper level than than people who are just reading stuff on YouTube or on some of the uh, casting websites that I that I put my stuff on. And I believe that I will help you guys with your careers. In turn, if you guys, if you like what I'm doing, you'll try and find out more about me and you'll find that I have developed a step-by-step -step career course for actors and hopefully you'll try it out. Hey, it's guaranteed, right? What have you got to lose? That is, of course, until I become a TV series regular, which I will very soon, and it completely changes me into a vapid, self-aggrandizing egomaniac. But until then, I'm available by email. So seriously, though, guys, I love to help cut through the BS and hype and just boil things down to their simplest terms. Acting is very simple, both as an art and as a career. It's just a question of knowing what to keep and what to throw away. And hopefully I can help you guys see through a lot of the clutter that again is marketed to you uh, to enrich in other people. You know, d don't go looking for ways to spend your money. Once you've run out of uh, ways to create relationships face-to-face -face and you want to augment that, 
then you can you know think about spending some money but most of that money is not effective because like any advertising it is seen uh, with a grain of salt by anyone who sees it I mean you could ask anybody what's the best kind of marketing and that's word of mouth what how do you know what's a good restaurant because of the commercials or because your friend went there and told you it's a great restaurant so all of the marketing that you send out whether it's postcards or whether you go you know to to workshops or whatever it's not entirely taken seriously by the the recipients of it because you're paying for it if if someone else a third party was telling casting directors or producers or directors about you and not an agent because an agent of course has a vested interest they have a conflict of interest because they get paid when you get paid so the only time you know it's either one on one so you have a relationship with these people and they trust and like you or they can hear about you from somebody else so somebody they know and trust tells them about you and and that's great too I also I encourage you guys to help one another okay if you have a great relationship and there's something coming up that you know you have a friend that would be right for it then please encourage you know your 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 relationships your friends uh, in the business to look at the actors that you know that might be good for these things but also you need to encourage those actors if they're sitting on their butts or they're doing a bunch of silly stuff that they need to behave more like a professional and get out there and sell sell their stuff so basically the message is look be a professional and hang out with other professionals and go out and create relationships and you cannot help but succeed but succeed and as the shepherd once said fleece on earth and goodwill to men alright guys thank you for listening and we'll see you inside those of you who are inside and those of you who aren't I suggest you get inside and get serious about your careers because everyone that is on the inside of Hack Hollywood is learning a ton about how to build their careers and and just me giving it to them is not enough they have to go out and do it so there it is thanks for listening